Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrew Gamer Telecom video, we're going to be going over the tech news over the past 24 or so hours, or at least the largest pieces of tech news, the exciting, the juicy bits, don't you know? So we're going to be starting things out alphabetically as usual, and that would mean AMD, because they have appointed a former Intel, and for that matter, Broadcom uh, engineer, to work and head up their CPU division. So you may be aware that last year, summer of last year, Jim Keller left AMD, and he was of course their former head CPU architect. He has been, at least in the meanwhile, uh, his shoes have been filled by AMD CTO Mark Papermaster, but Papermaster is going to be stepping aside, and of course we're going to be seeing Nazir um, Zaidi taking on the responsibilities of not just Jim Keller's role, but also he's going to be more looking not just at, hey, we need to be doing this to make this high-end processor, but he also wants to take a more futuristic vision. He wants to kind of lead the company um, in a very... A very set direction and he's of course going to be not just handling the CPU division but he's also going to be looking at SOX system engineering and basically their strategy as a whole. This is quite interesting because Jim Keller had as I said left the company but when he had left it was at a fairly reasonable time because the basic tape out and design for the Zen processor cores had finished. They were basically in the initial testing phases so his work at least the most majority majority of it had ended so it's going to be interesting to see what Nazir actually brings to the company and what direction it's going to push AMD now we know that AMD are planning to target uh, the server market with their upcoming CPUs this is something that uh, Dr. Lisa Su uh, has actually said regarding AMD's future and Zadie actually had uh, previously worked on Intel designing the Itanium lineup, which actually started production way back in 2001. His work was instrumental for everything from the basic bus architecture to hardware compatibility. More recently, though, he's been um, the VP of Engineering over at Broadcom, and he's been working on the company's ARM V8 processor, along with other projects as well, but has since left, as I mentioned. It's going to be rather interesting to see how all of this plays out. AMD's top-of-the-line server processors, supposedly which will be featuring Zen, are going to feature 16 processor cores with SMT, so that means 32 threads handled simultaneously, and potentially even integrated HBM2 and high-end GPUs. Uh, so, very curious because we know Zen is obviously going to be released this year. We know Zen Plus is going to follow, which is supposedly going to have about a 5 to 10% increase over Zen. So, what follows after that, we can only guess. Anyway, thanks for Elizabeth for messaging us the tip on Facebook. And we're going to be skipping along to the next bit of news. And this one comes to us from Zuba. So, Zuba, of course, is the shipping manifest website. And it's actually really handy because if you use it on a fairly regular basis, you can actually find a lot of information from both AMD, NVIDIA, and other vendors as they're sending engineering samples backwards and forwards for testing and verification purposes. Now, one of the beauties of Zuba is that you do get to at least have an inkling of how expensive the product is because they need to insure it, right, as it's being sent. So, for, the, for example, it may be that the value of one is, let's say, 50,000 and the value of another is 70,000 or 100,000. Now, these are in Indian rupees, just to clarify, so don't expect that to convert to US dollars or Great British Pounds. I don't have a heart attack or anything like that. Regardless, we know a couple of things. Firstly, NVIDIA are, of course, going to be showing something at the keynote conference um, sorry, at the GPU Technology Conference keynote, which is going to be held in April. Now, we don't know what they're going to show. I mean, it's vaguely possible they may not show anything hardware. They may just show slides and tech demos, but it's probable they're going to show off some working silicon. I say that because if they didn't, I think the internet would be a buzz and really concerned with the future of Pascal, uh, simply because we obviously have seen Polaris at least somewhat demoed in a couple of instances now. We saw it running uh, Hitman for sake of argument. So right now, we really expect NVIDIA, if not to tell us the specifications 
of Pascal, we at least expect them to show some working silicon. So with that said, this is a really good indicator that most likely we're seeing a very high-end GPU in the lineup. Now, of course, high-end and NVIDIA are two very difficult things to quantify, and the same thing could be said for AMD as well. So, for the sake of argument, whether this could be GP104 or GP100 is pretty unknown. So, we could be seeing something along the lines of at least a GTX 1080, or whatever it ends up being called. Some people are calling it the X80, uh, but let's just call it the 1080 for simplicity's sake, or maybe even the tie. So this is most likely going to be a full die. Now whether that die has some shaders cut or not, we don't know. But it is certainly going to be a more expensive unit. What's further compounding the interest levels of all of this is NVIDIA have been shipping these for some time. In fact, we've done some videos on them in the past. But the insurance values of this particular product, which is actually... Um, for a quantity of six, it's 1.221 million. Um, well, actually, let me just rephrase that, 1.2 million. And the quantity of two is 480,000. So that's per unit price of 241,000, where the second one is 203,000. So that's really expensive. Once again, do remember, these are Indian rupees. So once again, don't start panicking too much. But this is considerably higher than the previous values where you were looking at like 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 70,000, like those type of values. So we're looking at not just a small increase, but a massive increase. So, you know, several times the value type of level. So what do we know about this particular GPU? Well, we don't know massive amounts at the moment in terms of the shader specifications that type of stuff what we do know is of course it's going to be 16 nm we know that the gpu is going to focus a lot more on compute we know that it's going to handle uh half precision or uh, rather single precision at double the performance we know that it's most likely going to be using some form of gddr5x and not hbm2 just because of the uh, release date of the GPU. We don't know if that's going to translate to the Titan lineup, but at least for the GTX 1080 and most likely the 1080 Ti, we will not be seeing once again HBM2. And the bottom line is, much like AMD's GPUs, we should be seeing a rather healthy, rather large performance increase from the previous generation. And honestly, I think this is the generation of GPUs because we're moving from 28 down to 16. I think it's the GPU that we're most excited about. So the 14, 16 era is finally here and we've been, you know, we've had so many bloody, I guess you could say improvements to the architecture, you know, how many variants of GCN have we had on 28NM? How many variants of um, even Maxwell? Yes, it was a lot more efficient. Yes, the power envelope was a lot better. Yes, it had more performance over, let's say, Kepler. But did it revolutionize anything? No, it was just a lot better than what we had. So hopefully, this jump in performance is going to be... I'm not going to say it's going to be the biggest we've ever had because that's a pretty damn bold statement. For example, when the... Remember when the 8800 was released way back in the day when we started to get unified shaders that was a massive increase in performance or when voodoo 2 was released that was a huge increase in performance so even the 9700 pros way back in the day once again a massive increase in performance like seriously when you put a 9700 9800 in your machine when they were released you thought to yourself holy shit this performance jump over what I had previously, especially if you were coming from like an older GPU, like for example, let's say the GeForce 2 MX, let's say you did a big upgrade, it, it was jaw-dropping. Um, seeing something like, oh I don't know, Far Cry running on it was just really damn impressive. And once again, the same thing for the 8800 series, uh, which was of course subsequently pushed into many different GPUs, like the 9800 series was essentially a rebrand. So, with any luck, we will see an absolute ridiculous performance increase with this graphics cards and 
that goes from wherever you're on Camp NVIDIA or Camp AMD. I think it's just going to be a great generation. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.